Hey everyone, it's Sean Sainamore and I'm Offsite Dirt High Performance Build with two amazing individuals here. We've got Joe and Aaron. I will let them introduce themselves as I get our slide deck ready for today's conversation. Gentlemen, say hello. How's it going, everybody? Aaron, uh, Sean, good to see you today. Uh, I'm Joe Kanapaki. I'm with Insight Property Services. We're a building consulting and inspection company uh, in the Chicagoland area. Um, we advise people when they're buying a house, selling a house, building something new, or trying to make sense of what they got. So we do a lot of forensic investigations of homes. And uh, I can tell you what, comfort is the big, uh, is what makes the phone ring most often. So this will be a good conversation to have. Aaron? Well, it's an absolute pleasure to be here with you gentlemen today. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Aaron Jones. I'm a carpenter and a builder on Grand Manan Island in New Brunswick. I work with Big Dog Construction. And uh, as you can tell, flashings are kind of important to me. Um, huge, huge fan of uh, let's, let's build a resilient building. And uh, managing water, definitely one of those ways. And if you manage for water, somehow you usually manage for air, which also equals comfort which is, I think, part of our topic today. Yeah, it, again, the topic today is comfort. And the reason we bring it up is because every human can enjoy and understand what comfort is about. They can relate to it in their own way. And it's one of those conversations where when we talk about comfort, I mean, we're going to dive into different aspects of comfort, um, but everyone can relate to it. And one of the things that um, that I like talking about is just the fact of when you're in that space, right, we're in this high performance space, you now got this conditioned space for what ideally is what humans like. And now that we know that humans are spending about 80% of their time in a building, you know, some type of enclosure, comfort is key. And so when we're looking at comfort, it's the fact that it's typically, you know, again, I'm going to go uh, Celsius, Joe, I'll let you deal with the Fahrenheit because uh, <laughs> I'm in Vancouver, Joe, or sorry, Aaron's on the other side of, uh, of Canada and you're in Chicago. So, uh, you know, 21 or 20 degrees seems to be the sweet spot of what humans like. Uh, some might say 19, some might say 24, but we know like that threshold of what we like. Uh, we like a relative humidity between 40 and 60%. Uh, uh, and so we we kind of know kind of like those numbers of what provides comfort. But then with the fact that we have a really good enclosure, all of a sudden we have, you know, quietness. And so when you're in this space and you have calmness, you have temperature and moisture can, content that is was where you want to be at. It's it's fantastic. So, uh, Joey, you you deal with this a lot when it comes to uh, comfort. What are some of the clients um, bring about when they talk about comfort for you? Yeah, well, like I said earlier, that it's the number one thing that gets the phone ringing. You know, you might say we do energy audits, but we, we've started referring to it as home performance testing because energy was always kind of a, a byproduct for a lot of our clients. The primary driver, you know, things that got people, you know, fussing and fidgeting and needing, to, needing some resolution was comfort. Uh, the second floor hot in the summer, uh, uncomfortable drafts, um, sometimes even, you know, uh, issues with condensation, cold walls, perceived drafts around windows. Um, you know, all of these things just led to people um, being dissatisfied with the temperature differences between floors. Sometimes the temperature differences on a floor, meaning like it'd be cool three feet off the ground and somebody who was six foot tall or higher had their head in like this thermal pillow hanging on the ceiling, you know, so... Um, yeah, people just, you know, like this, this seems like it doesn't, I don't have to tolerate this, this should be able to be fixed, you know, and that's been satisfying as being able to go uh, into homes and saying, okay, here's how we fix this, not just deal with the symptoms, but here's how we fix it. So it doesn't come back. So we have to, you know, throw minimal mechanicals at the problem, right? If you build a good enclosure, the mechanicals don't have a whole lot to do. Yeah. So, uh, and that's the way it should be. Yeah, I, I mean, I always have those conversations when we talk about uh, when we're growing up and, and uh, you know, be like, hey, mom, turn on the, uh, the heat and be like, no, go put on a sweater. And so <laughs> the fact that uh, we might even have like rooms, you know, like that, 
that guest room gets closed off in the wintertime because we don't want to heat it. And so it just gets closed and be like, okay, we can have guests in the springtime, but in the wintertime, we're not going to have it. And so, yeah. So having all the rooms uh, from being as close to the window or being in the middle of the room, having that nice temperature uh, from your toes up. Uh, and it's funny too, like one of the things that I, that I was really happy to learn about high performance is that humans, how, uh, again, when it comes to temperature, how much they're affected. Like if you are two degrees difference between your toes and your core, you feel uncomfortable. And uh, it's really interesting to just understand um, in a room how quickly you can have different temperatures, even like a 10 foot by 10 foot box, like as you as you said there. And, uh, and the fact that humans can pick up on it um, and like, again, knowing from a measurement standpoint of what that looks like. And so, yeah, having that balanced room uh, and floor and house really matters. So Aaron, what do you, uh, when you have talked to clients about comfort, what are some of the things that they talk about or what are things that you talk to them about? Well, usually I, I start with something they can relate to, um, <clears throat> you know, in your existing house, you know, if you're sitting on a couch watching TV and, you know, the wind picks up outside, do you, you know, in the wintertime, do you have to put on a sweater? Do you feel a chill? You know, is there, what's the most comfortable room in your house? And what's the room you hate the most in your house? And you can usually like, you know, my basement is damp and something. There's always something. Uh, or, you know, I don't know what it is. I can't find it. But this room always smells funny. We all know what that means. Yeah. Um, <sighs> everybody's situation is different but you know let's start with the things you don't like about the space you're in right now and then we start explaining the things we can do to fix them either in a energy retrofit situation or on a new build yeah new construction is a great opportunity to get out ahead of it you know people always, that's people's biggest lament they're like well how come this wasn't done when the place was constructed in some cases it's like they didn't know about it 30 years ago in other cases it's they didn't care to do any more than the bare minimum um or that was just the way they've been doing it for 20 years and they haven't learned any different and since nobody's nagging them to do any better they just kind of stick to the same recipe you know um so one of our biggest you know um i think the biggest pieces of value that we bring to our clients is, is letting them know like no no there, there's a different way to do this you know, there, there is a way to resolve these issues, you know, in some cases, it's not just a matter of throwing, you know, more resource or energy or, you know, forced air distribution or whatever at the problem, you go, no, you know, we can, we can change the building enclosure. And then, you know, all of this starts to work better. And then eventually we can put in a right size HVAC system. We can put in, you know, mechanical ventilation for fresh air exchange, you know, it, you know, we are going to make your house tighter. It's not going to be unhealthy. As a result, it's just going to be more evenly comfortable. Um, you know, it's it's so funny how we very often people will say, like, my living room windows are drafty. And, and to the window manufacturer's credit, uh, the windows aren't drafty even when they're old. You know, a lot of windows themselves, the, the sashes, frames, all that stuff, they stay, you know, fairly tight. It's, it's more often than not the installation around it that's drafty. Um, but say even that's okay. You know, the, the guy's actually sealed between the window and the wall, the cold, the, the heat being lost to the window assembly and, and allows the air to cool and fall. And so people report drafts near their big window and they're not feeling cold air coming from, from outside. What they're feeling is the downswing of a convective loop. Yeah. Air is cooling off at the window. It's falling down around their shoulders you know, and they find it uncomfortable. Uh, sometimes they'll say, it's freezing. My left arm is freezing and my right arm is fine. I'm like, all right, man, let's agree that it's not freezing. It might be three or four. It's noticeably cooler. I'll give yes. you a noticeably cooler, but yeah. it's not freezing. Come on, let's not get hit. His, let's deal down the histrionics. But it's those histrionics that get you, you know, paid. So <laughs> the intolerance of the cool draft on my left arm. Um, but it's, and then we turn the blower door on and you don't feel any drafts at those windows because the window assembly is tight, but it is thermally underperforming. It's losing, you know, so the air is losing significant heat to the outside. It falls down and you get, and you're just on the bad side of a, of a convective loop. So all that stuff goes away when you look at a high performance building enclosure. 
Yeah. And again, we're talking about high performance builds that new builds, which we, again, we focus a lot on because that's what we're trying to improve. But again, all this can be applied to our existing buildings. And uh, for those that don't quite get it, the uh, whole retrofit market is coming. Uh, renovations, again, we're going to, I mean, I think all renovators need to get a, uh, a language upgrade that'll be a retrofits that we do. Again, when you're looking at improving the uh, the bathrooms and the, the kitchens that are, again, most of the work, that when they touch the exterior walls, they're going to have to uh, upgrade them to make sure that they're more high performing. Um, so yeah, all the points you said, Joe and, and Aaron are exact. Um, and uh, again, I mean, it's just, it's just interesting about this whole conversation of comfort because um, everybody can understand it when we start to talk about these these little pinpoints of hey when you're in your home do you change your outfits during the day to manage the temperature in your home um even you know even like where i'm in a rental and just the fact that in the mornings i have to manage the blinds just to ensure that the uh um that the heat doesn't get in through the windows uh nighttime flushing again now i have to keep all the windows closed during the day and the nighttime open them up i mean these are behaviors that we do to ensure that we have a comfortable space but a high performance build you don't have to worry about those little behavior models of your home because the house performs the way it needs to how needs to work and uh, and so you can save a few minutes of not having to go around and tweak the temperature so, uh, you know, it's really effective of how we work out and comfortable matters. So it's it's really quite interesting of how this whole thing works. So, uh, Aaron, any last points about comfort? Um, you know, just well, if you're sorry, if if you're in the market to either upgrade what your existing structure is or do a new build, just take some time and spend a moment in every room in your house and go, okay, what do I love? What do I hate? What makes me comfortable? What makes me uncomfortable? And you're gonna be able to start checking off boxes. And some of them are gonna to have to do with air. Uh, some of them are gonna to have to do with heat. Just little things just to take notice of. And it's gonna make your next space or improvements to your existing space that much better. Excellent. Aaron, hey, I'll, Mark Willie. Good. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I was going to ask Aaron real quick uh, before we say hi to Mark. Um, what areas of discomfort are most common to to your part of the market? It's like, what what do people beef about the most? Windows, 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 windows. <laughs> now, however, did I say windows? I have, I have seen on one occasion where in the corner of a bedroom there was three inches of frost sticking off the drywall um three but, inches is quite quite a bit i've seen the frost in the corner but three inches uh that, that beats yeah. mine it was uh minus 30 celsius that day and there was basically an uninsulated corner in the frame and uh you know something got missed that shouldn't have been missed but openings that's the number one comfort issue and